This is a digital pH meter, and I'm gonna share with you how to use it, how to calibrate it, and tips to keep it accurate. Chapters for this video are provided in the description. When it initially comes in the mail, be sure to read all the instructions, since this video isn't intended to replace the instructions, but rather help clarify them, since they can be a little confusing. Here's what's needed for the calibration. The meter comes with three packets of buffering solutions. Therefore, you need three glasses, one glass for each packet. Distilled water. The instructions specify this type of water is needed for the calibration. Tap and well waters vary in their chemical and mineral profiles, whereas distilled water ensures purity and a consistent standing pH needed for accurate calibration. A digital thermometer isn't required, but it's very helpful in getting the distilled water to the correct temperature, again, for an accurate calibration. Now I'm gonna walk you through the calibration process step-by-step. Step. We'll do one buffering packet at a time. Start with 250 milliliters of distilled water. This water needs to be 25 degrees Celsius. Depending on where you live, room temperature may be just right. But if yours is a little below, here's how you can bring it up to the correct temperature. Pour the water into a saucepan. As you can see with this example, the temperature is only a couple of degrees off, so warming it without overheating the water will literally only take seconds. Turn the burner on low and use your hand or a utensil to swirl the water around briskly, then quickly turn the heat off. Recheck the temperature. Here in this example, it's at 24, so I'm gonna repeat what I just did to bring it up only one degree. Recheck the temperature and now it's perfect. Let's pour this water into the glass. The first buffering packet will be the green 6.86. Empty the powder into the glass, then stir completely until it's fully dissolved. This can take a minute or two, so have patience. Now it's time for the pH meter to be calibrated. The button pushing on the meter will be a little different with each glass or buffering solution, so be sure to watch these instructions all the way through. Turn the meter on by pushing the top button. Place it in the glass no further than the immersion line. Push the second lower button, which is the calibration button, and hold it down for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Release the button and wait for the meter to start and stop flashing. Calibration number one is now complete. You can leave the meter on or turn it off in between each of the three calibrations. It doesn't really matter. Rinse the meter off with a little distilled water, wipe off the excess water, and be extremely gentle with a feather light touch. Be absolutely sure not to touch the internal mechanism, particularly this little glass bulb. Now we'll do the second calibration. Bring another 250 milliliters of water up to temperature. Open the 4.01 packet and empty the contents into the jar. Stir until completely dissolved. So now what you're going to do is you're going to hold the calibration button down for five seconds, release, and then press it one time quickly. Place the meter in the water and here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, release, one quick press. Wait for the meter to start and stop flashing. Calibration number two is now complete. Rinse the meter off and gently remove the excess water. For the third and final calibration, prepare another glass of 250 milliliters of distilled water. Get it to the correct temperature. Open the blue 9.1 packet and empty the contents into the glass. Stir until completely dissolved. Place the meter into the water and if needed, turn it on. Now here's what we're gonna do. We are going to hold the calibration button down again for five seconds, then release and press two more times quickly. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, release, one, two. Wait for the meter to start and stop flashing. Calibration number three is now complete. Rinse the meter, except do not dry it off this time. The instructions say not to let the pH probe dry out, so when done, rinse it with regular water 
and place the lid on it, still wet. And just to note, the water only needs to be distilled water for the calibration process. Now that the meter is calibrated, here's an example of how to take a pH reading. Place it in liquid and turn it on. Take the reading. Remember not to go deeper than the immersion line. When done, turn it off and rinse it with tap water. If you have another ferment to test, place it straight in. Turn the meter back on and take the reading. When done, rinse, cap, case. Let's discuss the meter's accuracy for a moment. For fermentation, you don't really need the one hundredth of a point reading, which is the second number to the right of the decimal point. It's the tenth of a point that's the most helpful. I have found the pH reading to be off by hundreds of a point. This is just an example, but the meter could read 6.01 when the true pH is 5.96. That's a difference of 0.05. To me, that's not a concern. A paper pH strip certainly can't be any more accurate, and in 99.9% .9 of home vegetable fermentations or home vinegar making, being off by hundreds of a point isn't relative. To help keep the meter accurate and have a long life, here are some tips. This is lightweight and made from plastic. It can break easily. I speak from experience, so I'm here to help you learn from my mistakes. Getting bumped around and jostled can disrupt its sensitive internal mechanism. It comes with a case, so keep it there anytime you're not using it. And even though it's in its case, avoid putting it in a drawer that sees a lot of action, like a utensil drawer. A low action cupboard or countertop space is a better idea. Jostling won't necessarily break it, but it could create the need for frequent calibration, which is just an unnecessary task if it's just kept somewhere sedentary. Dropping it on a hard floor will also break it. I've done this, and it's still turned on, but the pH reading was just jumping all over the place, like up to 11, then down to 2, and up again, very sporadic behavior. Calibrating it did not resolve the issue. The mechanism clearly became too damaged after accidentally dropping it on the floor, and unfortunately, I had to buy another one. Don't put it in extreme temperatures like boiling or tea-ready water. Putting it into something that's practically frozen is probably not a good idea. Don't submerge it past the fill line. I accidentally dropped mine into the brine once, way past the fill line up to that little digital display area, and afterwards it just stopped turning on altogether. Had to buy another one. Don't try to wash it with a sponge or soap. One time I thought this would be a really good idea. The meter had sporadic, non-fixable behavior afterwards. That mechanism in the pH meter is just too delicate to be touched. And since I've gone through several of these because of my own negligence, I hope you avoid my mistakes by learning from them instead. My last tip is this. It's possible it will need a calibration just here and there to keep it accurate after long periods of heavy use or long periods of inactivity. But truthfully, when taking good care of the pH meter, an in-between calibration just isn't needed that often. The meter only comes with the initial three buffering solution packets. So I purchased a handful of packets separately just to have on hand for those future once in a while calibrations. This is of course optional, but if you do decide to purchase more packets, be sure to get the ones with the correct pHs for this meter, which are 6.86, 4.01, and 9.18. That's it. I hope this cleared up any questions you may have had about using a pH meter with fermenting, as well as how to care for it and calibrate it. I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye.